Welcome to another Wise Out tutorial. In this video, we'll be looking at Microsoft Power Apps, specifically how to create and publish your first app. As part of this, we will cover creating your app using the data option in Canvas Apps. We will look at the three screens that have been created inside of the Canvas app, including the gallery view for looking at lots of rows, the detail view for expanding one row to see more information, how to write data back using the edit view, and as part of this, how we can save your app, delete records, export your app to file, and import an app from file. Okay, let's begin. To generate this app from data, we need well, some data. For this, I'll be using a OneDrive connection. I have an Excel file, all about the world famous Wisel Movies database. In here, I have multiple different sheets, but the one I'm interested in is this Actors sheet. For Power Apps to be able to read in this data, make sure that your data is held inside of a table. If you're not sure how to make one, insert table. I'm going to swap back into Power Apps, new app, start with an app template. From here, from Excel, Choose OneDrive for business, OneDrive, and select your file. This will list out all the tables. I'm going for the actor table. Come down and click create app. After a few moments, we'll have our app. Let's have a look at the different screens. Over on the left hand side of the page, you'll see this little icon. This is Tree View. If you're wondering about the names of these icons, click on the hamburger menu at the top. I'll probably keep this closed most of the time. All it does is add the text. If you look here, we now have three separate screens. A browse screen, which is showing us data. Minimize that and click on detail screen. Detail screen, which is giving us more information than the previous view could show. And finally, an edit screen, which has the ability to change the data and write back to the data source. Before we continue, let's make sure we've saved the app. In the top right hand corner of the screen, you'll see a good old floppy disk. Use the drop down arrow and choose save as. Give your app a name. 02 auto app. Click save. You should get into the habit of saving your apps as soon as you've created them. The reason for doing this is because of the auto save feature. Come to the top of the page and click on settings. In here you have the name and the description. Scroll down and you'll see the option for auto save. Your report will automatically save every two minutes. As long as you don't leave the app, you can still use the undo button. But once you've left your app, all the saves will be permanently made. Click close. Let's take a look at our browse screen in more detail. The browse screen has a couple of different objects on it. These are known as controls. We have a text label, 
a text input, and then several different icons. The refresh icon to refresh your data source, a sort icon that will change the value held inside of a variable, which ultimately leads to our data being sorted. And a plus icon that lets us navigate to a new screen. The most important thing on the page though, is this section here. This is your gallery. If you look on the left hand side, you'll see this one has automatically been called Browse Gallery to match the name of the screen, Browse Screen. Galleries are made up of two parts. The bottom section is the gallery as a whole. If you want to edit the gallery though, you click on this top section. Any changes you make to this top section is reflected on all of the rows in your gallery. If I move the name down, you'll see all the names move down. You can insert different controls in here. So you'll see that we have three labels and one icon. This icon is telling it when the icon is selected to also select the parent. All of these controls are children to the entire row which is the parent in this case. The gallery has its own data source. We can see this at the top of the page. Our data is coming from the actors data source, which was the name of our table in Excel. There's a couple of extra features, which we'll look at later on in the course. To get to the next page using the gallery, we can either click on the arrow in the gallery or we can go to the left hand side and come down to detail screen. The detail screen is for looking at whichever row in the gallery you clicked on in more detail. The detail screen, if we expand it, has a couple of different controls on it like our previously seen icons and labels. But the new thing here is the detail form. The detail form has the same data source as our gallery, the actor table. But instead of showing multiple items, the detail form only shows one. If I scroll down to item, I can see the current row we're showing is the actor that was selected in the gallery. A form shows several different fields. These are your columns for the row that you selected in the gallery. If I look on the right hand side, you'll see there's the data source and beneath that fields. Click on the selected fields and you can see them all listed out. You can rearrange them in here, or you can remove them. If you wanted to delete this record, we have this little bin icon. To remove an item, we use the remove function, followed by the data source, followed by the row or record that we want to remove. In this case, we want to remove the selected row. If we want to edit this row, we can instead click on the pen icon. Similar to how we had the new form action, here we have the edit form. The navigate command allows us to move between pages. So when we click on this icon, we can move to the next page. To trigger an action while still in editing view, hold the ALT key. Notice that my icon has changed from a cursor to a hand. Left click. If you look over on the left hand side, the final screen that has been created for us is the edit screen. Similar to the previous two, we have several different icons doing different actions. And most importantly, we have our edit form. The edit form works in the same way as the detail form. 
we have a data source and we have an item. The item is set to the row that was selected in the gallery. For this editing to work, each of our fields sits on a card. If I click on this first row, scroll down in my tree view, you'll see one card for each of our fields. Expanding the card shows me the pieces that make up this card. Star visible. This tells you whether this is a compulsory field or not. Power Apps has automatically generated a Power Apps ID and stored it inside of the Excel file. This is required in Excel as there are no primary keys. Whereas when using something like SharePoint or SQL, instead Power Apps will connect to that primary key. Error message is a hidden bit of text which will appear anytime the above card has an error. Data card value is the input box that lets us change the values passed back to the data source. And finally, data card key is a text label, which is the name of our column. For this right back to work, the field actually has another setting. Click on the card and go back to the top, use the drop down and scroll down to update. Each of our cards has this update and it's telling Power Apps what value to pass back to our data source. So from here, when I update my data, it passes the contents of this text input back to the data source. So the text passed into this control. To actually submit your changes, in the top right hand corner, click on the little tick icon. This allows you to submit the form, saving your changes. From here, if I want to go back, I can use the X icon. This resets the form to its defaults, in this case, the currently selected actor, and takes me back to the previous page. Let's give this a try from the start. Scroll up to the top of your tree view, click on browse screen, and to run the entire app, go to the top right and click on the play icon, or click F5. To trigger the on select action of any of these icons, click on the row that you're interested in. To edit this field, go up to the top right, click on the pen icon, make a change. Go back up to the top right and click the tick icon. You'll see the update's gone through. And now if you click on the back arrow to return back to the gallery. To exit out, go to the top right, click on the X icon or choose the escape key. To make sure that your file is saved, go up to the top right and click on the floppy disk. If it's greyed out, your autosave has already happened. To publish your app, go to the right, click on Publish, choose Publish this version, and your app is now up into the cloud. To share the app, go to the left of the Play key and click on Share.
from here, enter the email addresses or Active Directory groups of anyone you want to share the app with. Note, because we're in a developer environment, our sharing capabilities are limited. Close this tab down. To export your app to a file, go back to the save icon and to the right, click on the drop down arrow. Choose download a copy. Choose download. And that will have downloaded as an MS app. To import your app, click on the three dots at the top of the screen. Choose Open. From here we can choose any of our existing files. But to import a file, go to Browse Files. And choose the file to import. Click Open. I'm not going to save the previous app. Thanks for watching this video. In the next one, we'll have a look at creating different types of controls.